Oh, hey, it's Henry. I'm Mowers and Blowers. How you guys doing? I'm on day 22 of the quarantine. Still alive and kicking, no symptoms. Anyway, this is episode four of my Toro Wheel Horse 1238XL. 12 horsepower, Briggs and Stratton flathead, 38 wide deck. I don't really know what XL means because there's nothing extra large about this except for maybe the rear wheels. As you guys know, yesterday I fixed the seat and I tried to fix my uh, mower deck that had five or six big rotted holes in the side near the side discharge area. Trimmed the discharge chute so it looks a little bit better. Wiped the whole thing down with some ATF and water. Looks pretty good actually. Today I'm going to finish fixing my rotted deck just to make it presentable. Also, I'm gonna go get a belt and see if I can get this uh, mower deck to spin its blades without any issues, you know? And then pretty much I'll be done with this damn thing and move on to the next project, which I'm not looking forward to. Uh, my friend Andy Gobby from the UK at Mower Wizards on Instagram he was giving me a little bit of static on uh, my uh, patch job on the um, mower deck. He says it looks pony. <laughs> um, that means shit in England. So I looked at it and I said, yeah, it does kind of look pony. I agree. But wait till I get paint on it. You'll see. Anyway, so I came out today and uh, <laughs> the silicone didn't really mend that big square part too well. Kind of just like hang in there. I just used my finger and it came right off. So I don't think that's gonna work. The other two parts of the structure, I think that might work. It's, it's on there and I can't even pull it off. So I think that's on there pretty well. But I gotta figure out another way to patch those holes. So I took you off camera um, because this was the piece that I made that went right there, right? and it just came right off. So I had scraped off all the uh, loose silicone that was still there. Um, if you look at it closely, I put um, Gorilla Tape on the inside of it, right? Just to um, plug the hole temporarily. Remember, it's temporarily because I'm gonna try, um, I'm gonna try some JB Weld and uh, the duct tape is just gonna hold the JB Weld there. Once I put the JB weld to fill the crater, if you will, right, smooth it out, um, the tape will either just fall off by itself or I can peel it off, whatever. This part here actually is, is pretty much on here. It won't come off, right? So that's pretty good. When this discharge chute goes back down, it, it covers that area. So I'm going to paint that too red, you know, to match the rest of the deck. So that ought to look okay, I guess. But I'm going to try the JB weld. For those who have never used JB Weld before, I'm just going to show you. I knew I was going to need this, so I bought this a while back. I never used it. Brand new. The red is the hardener. See? It says hardener. Black is the steel. <laughs> Quote, unquote, steel. So I'll just squeeze a little bit of this black. You kind of figure what how much you're gonna need you know I have like four or five pretty big holes even though it is only you know sheet metal thin you still want to try to fill it you know so you can leave this out here it's really not gonna harden uh, right away or anything unless you put this hardener in the hardener you put an equal amount of that right it's white in color when you mix them all together, it becomes a grayish color. That might be too much hardener I put in there, but that's okay. It'll just harden quicker, I think. Then you'll take a, some old thing like this. You can use a spoon or whatever, but I use this also to apply it to. Yeah, that's pretty, that's, that's pretty hard. Kind of smear it around, you know, mixing it until it's like a gray color. 
which it's starting to do now, but I don't know. It doesn't seem as um, mushy as I'm used to. There it is. I'm going to just go and apply it. Sorry, it's kind of dark back here. Just going to smear some in the hole there. Smear some in the hole here. Kind of like Bondo, you know. Smear some in the hole there. So JB Well, they call it liquid steel, and it's uh, and it does actually you know harden like steel. Actually, have a good amount on here, more than enough. It's kind of bubbles up over here though. It may take two applications. Now, if my buddy Mondo lived near me, I wouldn't be doing any of this because I would just have another deck to just simply put on. But he doesn't. He lives in New Jersey. New Jersey. And of course, we also have this pandemic going on, so it's not really convenient for us to get to hang out, you know? Not really supposed to hang out. None of us. I'm just fortunate that I actually have a lot of things to do. People are going bat crazy. No pun intended. <laughs> this thing all started with bats, I'm, think I'm thinking. It's a delicacy. You're going to try bats, oh yeah? You're going to get coronavirus, bro. Uh, here's a little... Um, tidbit about coronavirus okay so if you look at some Lysol cans right you know hand sanitizer all that they talk about coronavirus so there's a conspiracy theory about how people say oh you see manufacturers they created the uh, manufacturers of hand sanitizer and Lysol or the government created coronavirus because um, they, they want to sell things or something right? crazy some stuff stuff like that right um, you see, they already have cans that say coronavirus on it. Well, for the dumbasses who don't understand about coronavirus, coronavirus is has always been with us. Okay, we've always had coronavirus, such as H1N1, SARS, um, bird flu, all that stuff. Right? Those are all coronaviruses. This is just 19, which is the one that we're in now because it started in 2019. Cans are going to say coronavirus is on there because it was designed um, for those other coronaviruses. This COVID-19 is not the only coronavirus out there. There have been others in the past, many years ago. So, there's that. So, you know what? This, this part over here sinks down a little and bubbles up at the same time, if that makes sense. So, uh, I don't know. I'm going to play with it. Alright, well, I uh, guess that looks okay. I guess I'll uh, when it dries, I'll send it down a little bit and uh, spray over with the red paint. You won't even know it's there! So, I'll wait for that to cure. Takes uh takes quite a while, actually, but... It'll get hard at one point, and then I could start painting it. Then it can cure all at once. I'm going to go look for a belt in the backyard. So it's been like two hours, and it's still tacky. And uh, 
not drying at all so I'm a little annoyed in the meantime I tried to put on a uh, another belt and the belt that I have is too tight so that's that so I'm not messing with this anymore I've had it I've actually have a nut that wants to come over and find a tractor for four hundred dollars so I said four hundred dollars well there's only like three that I could sell you for four hundred dollars so that's the uh, MTD Cub Cadet and also the the nail in the flywheel model you know <laughs> it started right up and drove fine whatever you know uh, and the little Murray select wouldn't start batteries dead so the side part here where it's uh, has no plastic it's from a blueberry box the bottom of it not bad not good but better than nothing just a little bit of improvement, that's all. Uh, I'm going to have to wait until this is dry, otherwise I can't do anything. And I had nothing else to do, so I uh, took out the old uh, Murray Select and uh, put it on a trickle. See if it starts up. Maybe I can show the guy three tractors. Let's see if it'll start. It hasn't been on here too long. Maybe it just needs a little bit. Engine start mode, more amps. That battery is dunsky. So while that battery charges and I'm still waiting for ink to dry, pretty much um, JB weld to dry. It takes 24 hours for that thing to cure, so it's not going to be overnight, you know. So uh, that's just going to have to wait. Um, so some other nut wants to see this thing, all right? You know, all these people, they, they don't really care about the coronavirus. They just want their tractors, you know what I mean? Uh, this I have listed for $775. I was going to take this outside, but look. Both rear tires are flat. I might have to put ATF in there. Taking this wheel off is a lot easier than the rest of them because this is just a half inch bolt that's onto the axle. it's of course stuck on there but things are never easy I remember removing this before.
not budging. Moving a little. Not a lot. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just uh, put ATF into it without taking the wheel off. What you got to do, and if it doesn't do it, go to plan B. I mean, I'm sure if I uh, go on for hours and hours, it'll work, but I didn't want to do that. So people ask me, hey, Henry, how many ounces? Well, if you've got a big crack and it leaks fast, then a lot. <laughs> if you have a slow leak, just enough to coat the whole tire. I usually put eight ounces in a front. This one will require probably 10 ounces since it's a bigger tire. It's a slow leak. So, um, this is, uh, this bottle is, uh, 24 fluid ounces. I think I just put in half. It's 10. So that's about 10 ounces I put in here. I'll save the other half for the other side. Since it's on jacks, the wheels spin freely. I'm just going to sit here and spin it. You can spin it fast or you can spin it slow. But I think it's being slow is better because it gives the ATF time to, to like drip. You know what I mean? So like I, I put it here on the bottom, right? So it's all like here. So I'll like put it over here on the top at 12 o'clock so that all the stuff that I just put in will slowly drip down around the rim and the bead area. Since I'm not taking the wheel off, I'll put this thing back on here again. Not that it'll come off, but I just don't want to forget. not coming off. Let's see if the other side comes off. If not, I'll have to do the same thing. I'm in very cramped space right here. See? This is next to the GT uh, 6000. I barely have any room for anything. Same problem. Let's see if I bang it. Will it budge? The other one didn't budge, so I stopped doing it. Nope. Didn't budge. I kind of forget. Did I? Was I able to take these wheels off? Before, I'm pretty sure that if I took them off, I would have put anti-seize on, you know, grease on the axle so it wouldn't do this again. But it's not even budging, man. And that's the problem with these uh, MTDs is because there's no key. It's a built-in key. So that uh, more area is being contacted with the axle, you know? If it was just a key, it's just a little small two millimeter thick key that doesn't really take up all the area, but this, it's, it's on there really well.
Yep, yeah, this is how I'm spending my Saturday. Well, honestly, is there anything else better to do? Can't go to the movies. There's no sports to watch. Just got the valve out. We will put the remainder of this ATF in here. Now I have the slime bottle that uh, makes it easy for me to put the ATF in here because this slime bottle is designed to put stuff into a, a tire. But honestly, it's just a regular, um, you know, I guess a, a fuel line would be too thin. You know, just like a regular hose, like an air hose for like uh, your fish tank or something. As long as it fits over the valve, you're good. And then find a bottle with like a small tip and squeeze it in somehow, you know? See? Looks just like that. So there's 10 ounces in here. Ten ounces in there. Just gonna slowly uh, slosh it around a little bit, uh, moving the wheel up and down. Now, every time I've done this, right, I've actually taken it, taken it off, and bounced it around, you know, spinning it and bouncing it. I've never done it without taking the wheel off. So we'll see if this works. Uh, I'll move it a quarter turn every few minutes just so that the ATF will slowly drizzle down the sides, covering the uh, beads, hopefully. You can spin it faster so it, the gravity going outwards, it tries to cover more area in the tire. All right, let's see if it starts now. It's been about 15 minutes. How will it start? Not a dead battery. So I was wondering why uh, the battery was down because it's a pretty new battery, you know? And then I tried to turn on the lights and the lights wouldn't work. I'm thinking maybe the rain got onto the switch or something, right? Created a circuit. Turned on the lights, drained the battery that way. I think that maybe that might be it. Other than that, starts just fine uh, now.
like to hear who came. What is going on, man? I guess I, we can't, we can't elbow, we can't do any of that, what about huh? This? All right. Thanks, man. Awesome. Not me, but maybe some of my countrymen did. Anyway, this is, this is the wave of the future here, right here. My buddies uh, Bobby and Larry came to, to visit, you know. Um, Bobby needs to borrow a uh, aerator, plug aerator. I don't know, I aerated my lawn a couple of times uh, last, uh, I don't know, six months ago or so. My lawn looks like shit. But uh, we're staying away from each other, six feet at least, you know. And now they're saying that we've got to wear masks all the time now too, just to be sure because it travels in the air, right? I mean, that's what they say, right? I think it's bullshit. travels 27 feet in laboratory conditions. What? 27 feet? Yep. See? A sneeze? A sneeze. A sneeze. Alright. Well, we're not sneezing. I'm actually double bagging it. I've got, I've got, I've got two condoms on. I've got this Lucas Oil thing and i got a mask on underneath. Um. Don't be taking off when you sleep with your wife. I hope so. I'm married. I don't sleep with my wife anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good to see Bobby and Larry again. Um, albeit we had these masks on the whole hour or so that uh, they were here. Uh, Bobby basically came to borrow um, my plug aerator. They want to try it on their lawn. <clears throat> I got to tell you, it was really uncomfortable with the masks on. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I hope this thing all ends pretty fast because you uh, can't hang out with your boys. You can't really do the things that you used to do. And uh, you always got to watch yourself when you're, when you're talking and stand apart from each other. And these masks really suck, you know. But anyway, now this thing doesn't run. I don't know why. It doesn't, it doesn't stay high throttle. So I have to look into that now. You know, there's always something. So I just took the carburetor off and cleaned it again and uh, there was like some of uh, this uh, oily substance inside the bowl so I thought maybe that was it and uh, it did start up for a second or two but then it just stopped so I decided uh, I decided I'm gonna do a compression test remember this was the one where I uh, grinded down the two valves you know what I mean so I think maybe that's finally catching up to me uh, it did run for quite a while, you know, a few days and stuff, running great, you know, but uh, over time, while it's running, you know, with the valves grinded down like that, you know, not to spec and stuff, things start wearing down, you know, so uh, I'm going to do a compression test on there. I, I suspect that has something to do with that. Let me get you closer to the, there you go, can you see it? Yeah, now you can see it. Okay, let's see if we uh, get at least 90 or 100 PSI. <laughs> 75 PSI. So unfortunately, I think maybe this engine might be Dunsky, you know. We did, uh, we did salvage it for a little while, you know, but then after it ran for a little while, things started getting... Uh, out of whack so uh, it's okay this is still a good tractor though you know what I mean and remember I have another flathead engine the 13 in the backyard that was from the mower number two from the seven from Mondo mowers right so uh, that's an engine that I could put on this but that's a project that still has to happen I've got so much to do and just not enough time in the day to do it just want to show you and uh, what it does. 
it'll start for a little while, maybe. And then after it runs for a little while, it'll stop because uh, it's not enough compression. See, it'll do that, but that's it. If I let this sit uh, for a couple hours and stuff, it'll start up for a little while longer and then it'll stop. Oh well, it uh, lasted a while, uh, while it did, but uh, I think this engine is pretty much done ski. The valves, the valve stems, you know, they're all done ski, I think. I thought I was going to be able to, you know, sell this and salvage it, but uh, the new owner probably would have got a hold of it and says, hey, I ran it for like a day or two and doesn't run anymore, so it's probably better that I didn't sell it. So I'll do an engine swap on this uh, when time permits, but for now I'll just park it in the back. Sorry it wasn't uh, too productive in getting things going, but sometimes days like this are just days like this. I'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel, buy a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com. See you guys on the next part. Have a great day. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.